this class we learn about the facade design pattern so what is a facade you might have heard of this term in architecture where a facade refers to the eye pleasing or the front of any building it's basically the beautiful exterior of a building which a person sees the details of the interiors how it was built how complicated the building actually is is completely hidden behind this eye pleasing facade the facade design pattern follows the same set of rules a facade in code is basically a simple interface that's available to a user in order to perform really complicated operations these complicated operations may have a whole bunch of systems behind it however the facade hides all the details from the user and makes it very simple and easy for him to integrate with this complicated system Let's take a look at a simple diagram which explains the facade pattern. Here we have a number of clients, client 1 and client 2. Each of these clients interact with the facade. Now the facade in turn interacts with several systems behind the scenes. Here we have three systems or three packages, package 1, 2 and 3, and it's the facade which interacts with them. gathers the information that the client needs pulls it all together and does something for the client all of these intricacies are hidden from the clients there is a larger body of complicated code behind the facade than what the client can see there can be one system or a whole range of systems behind the facade the user will see only the simple interface Let's see the facade pattern in action in a real Java library. Let's look at the code that we need to write in Java to download the contents of a URL. You can see the code that you see on screen right now. It's pretty simple and straightforward. You have a URL, we pass it to a buffer reader as an input stream, and then we read through it line by line. In fact, it's almost understandable in English what this code does. Let's see an exact parallel. We look at the code in C to download the contents of a URL. The same objective except that now we are writing in C rather than in Java. And here is what that code looks like. Let's just pause and look at what's on screen. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on in there. It's not really understandable unless you know the depths of networking. There are a whole bunch of settings to set up. Now, I'll confess that I didn't try too hard to make this code work. I got only so far and then I kind of gave it up. This is because it's just way too complicated and requires me to know too much. Now, a very obvious question to ask at this juncture is why is the Java code so simple while the C code is so complicated? Now, let's make one thing really clear. The process of downloading the contents of a URL is actually inherently complicated. There is nothing simple simple about the objective that we want to achieve. There's a whole bunch of things that are going on behind the scenes which we need to implement in order to accomplish this. What are all the different things that you'll have to worry about? Your machine must figure out what machine the URL actually corresponds to. then it needs to connect to that machine and ask for the contents of that url once it gets the contents of url it needs to be able to parse and understand what those contents actually are there's a whole lot of things to do and in fact it's almost deceptive that the java code is so simple this complexity is a reality both java and c need to face this complexity and it's not like one is dealing with it and the other is not both handle this complexity except they do so differently the difference between the java and the c programming language is that c code expects you to deal with the complexity it expects you as a programmer to deal with all the nitty gritty of connecting to a remote machine and downloading the contents of that url 
it expects that you as a programmer have full control over this process specify all the configuration parameters while java says i'll manage it for you you just tell me what you want done and i'll take care of all the nitty gritty that lies behind the scenes this is the difference between java and c which manifests itself in the form of a few lines of code for java and a whole bunch of gobbledygook for c the net library in java which manages all the details of setting up this connection with a url and downloading the contents assumes that you neither know nor care how exactly the contents of the url are obtained it gets you focused on your objective which is to get the contents of the url how it does it the java library assumes you do not care in fact not only that java has made the assumption that you know pretty much nothing about networking it's a huge assumption to make but it turns out in modern programming that's usually the case java assumes that you know nothing about networking you just know what objective you want to achieve this is important java has taken an inherently complex process which is connecting to a remote machine and downloading url contents and abstracted you as a programmer from that complexity it's basically said just let me know what you want done and i'll take care of all the details i won't expose you to all these issues this is the facade design pattern at work that is what java has used so what principle does the facade design pattern follow what is the underlying core of this pattern which helps us achieve our objective the facade design pattern basically means that anyone using a complicated set of classes should know as little as possible so anybody using those classes should know as little as possible about how those classes actually interact and produce the results that we need this is important and this forms the crux of the facade design pattern anyone interacting with a complicated system should know as little as possible about that system now the facade design pattern has become so ubiquitous so common that we don't even think about it it's the natural way good library designers and good programmers work for example there is the java library all these good design patterns have come together to make it incredibly useful and reusable but if you've ever programmed in c or c++ you know that the use of the facade in java and in other recent languages is a major life saver things weren't always this way this is a principle that has been applied to modern programming languages it was not always so another common software design principle is defined by demeter's law this is also known as the principle of least knowledge and it's exactly what it sounds like basically if you are interacting with any software component or system you should be able to have a successful interaction and get the result that you want with least knowledge of the internals of the other system so there are a whole bunch of things that demeter's law specifies each unit should have only limited knowledge about other units each unit should only talk to its friends don't talk to strangers so don't talk to components which are far beyond your own and only talk to your immediate friends which means talk to components only within your closest purview the facade design pattern basically encourages you to adhere to demeter's law and follow the principle of least knowledge interacting with a system should involve least knowledge of the system required to enable a successful interaction if you really set out to watch for it you'll find that the facade pattern is everywhere 
it's literally hiding in plain sight. A whole bunch of libraries that you'll use in Java just inherently follow the facade design pattern. Reflection, networking, database access, file access, working with media players, all of these are facades. There is a whole bunch of complicated code that you don't even know about. In each of these cases, all modern programming languages hide away the tremendous complexity from the programmer. Because we've realized that what the programmer wants to do is achieve the objective. If he delves into the details of everything that it takes to achieve the objective, he'll get there really slowly. Now, what lesson does this hold up for us as programmers and library designers? This means that we as programmers should try to do the same thing in our code. If we have a complex system which needs to provide results to a client, hide away the details behind a facade. Make it easy for the client to integrate with you. Now let's see how you would go about offering up a facade for your users. A few principles to follow. However complicated your classes are, however interconnected they are, and however they interact with each other. Offer a simple interface to your user. Do not expose the interconnectedness and the complications within your code to any client. The client should see a clean, simple interface that he needs to inter interact with. Do not rely on the internal implementation of any code written by others. I can't emphasize this enough. If you're interacting with some interface, because in a certain way, because you know what the internal implementation behind that interface is, your code is wrong and unmaintainable in the long run. Lastly, provide a clean interface so that others using your code don't need to reach inside your classes to get stuff done. If others have to reach inside your classes and know your internal details before they can successfully integrate with your code, your design is wrong. If you keep these principles in mind, you're following the facade pattern and following Demeter's law. Now, we've spoken about all these huge advantages that the facade pattern has to offer. There are sure to be some downsides. Yep, nothing in life is free. There are possible downsides to adhering to Demeter's law or to the principle of least knowledge. And let's quickly look at what they are. The very first thing is that just because the nitty gritty and the plumbing is hidden from you does not mean the complexity does not exist. I'll repeat that. Just because the plumbing is hidden from you and happening behind the scenes of a beautiful interface it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. What does this imply? When things go wrong under the hood, you have no idea what happened. The hood is covered. You have no idea what's going on behind there. It's impossible to debug when things go wrong. Now, the facade can get used more and more widely. If it's simple, easy to use, it's obvious that a whole number of clients will use it. Then it's also obvious that a whole number of clients will want additional functionality to be part of the facade. As it expands with more and more methods added, the facade itself can get bloated. It's no longer simple, it's no longer easy to use. That's something to watch out for. Okay. Now if you think about this entire interaction, you'll notice that the client speaks to the facade which speaks to several systems behind the scenes. So there's an additional hop before the client interacts with the systems which is going to give it its result. This means these additional method calls can add up and slow down the performance of your system. By introducing an additional hop in the form of a facade, your system's performance might suffer. So these are the downsides of the facade pattern. Think through it, use it wisely. However, there are multiple upsides 
which make the facade pattern a ubiquitously used pattern in programming nowadays. Thank you.